Hi guys! Today, we're sharing a video on creating a landscape using deep resin. The scene depicts a dense tropical rainforest, with a mighty water snake slowly swimming through a pond filled with small fish in a swamp. Throughout the process, we'll share tips on creating similar designs. Without further ado, let's get started. First take out an appropriate amount of polymer clay and start shaping it. Let's begin shaping the snake. Start by roughly rolling the clay into a long cylindrical shape. It may require some effort at the beginning, but as you continue to knead the clay over time, it will become softer and more malleable and making it easier to shape. Next, use your hands to shape a triangular head for the snake. Place two small balls at the eye positions. This is a dotting pen. At the nose area on the face, use the smaller end of the dotting pen to create nostrils. This is a carving pen, used for creating openings and indentations in the design. Use a carving pen to press out the shape of the snake's mouth, please making sure both sides are symmetrical. This is a fishing net. You can cover it over the surface of the snake and use your hands to press out the scale effect. Wow! Look! What like the scales of a snake? Isn't it interesting? Let's pose for a snake writhing. Use acrylic paint to add color to the snake. The belly of the snake is white, and the back is yellow. Apply the color in two to three layers to achieve a more even finish. At the neck area, apply a slightly deeper yellow-brown color to give the skin a more textured appearance. Make the color on the forehead of the snake slightly darker. I am creating a water snake design, taking inspiration from the appearance of real snakes to draw patterns on the snake's body. I use a dark brown color to create blocks of patterns. Then, use acrylic paint to outline the edges of the patterns, delineating the texture of the skin. Finally, add some color to the eyes of the snake. Next, let's start making the small fish. I am referencing a freshwater fish, the tiger barb, which has many intricate details on its body. It may take more time to create. First, shape the rough outline of the fish. Then, cut out a small triangle and attach it to the fish's back. Use a dotting pen to press and solidify the shape. The same method applies to other parts as well. Use a cutter knife to press out the texture. It takes a little time to make here. Attach small beads at the eye positions. Using the fishing net to rest patterns onto the body. Use acrylic paint to add color to the fish. Apply the color in two to three layers to achieve a more even finish. Outline the stripes on the fish's body. Define the details on the body. Now, let's start making the swamp. First, sketch the approximate shape on the surface of the high-density foam board. Use a cutter knife to cut away the unnecessary parts. This process is very relaxing. Crumple aluminum foil into a ball to create the desired height of the shape. Take out the pottery and cover it on the entire surface of the foam board. 
Make the shape of the land and the inside of the swamp with varying heights and create an uneven appearance. Place small pottery made stones on the surface and distribute them unevenly. Use white latex to brush the entire surface of the structure. Sprinkle gravel as decoration to enhance the realistic texture of the land surface. The white latex serves as an adhesive, securely holding the sand and stones in place. Next, use acrylic paint for coloring. I start with a base of black, then irregularly dab gray, green, and white on the surface to make the land look more realistic. If the coloring is too uniform, it won't appear authentic. Now, let's create the tree trunk. Wrap a wire into a shape, and it serves as a support. Cover the wire's surface with soft clay and sculpt the shape of the tree at the bottom of the tree trunk. I left some wire protruding to make it easy to insert into the ground, ensuring a stable structure. Then, use a modeling pen to create uneven and varied patterns on the tree, representing its height and texture. This is another tree stump that I prepared in advance. It's placed on the land for decoration, with the tree roots extending into the swamp, Then use pliers to insert the wire under the tree into the ground to fix it. Color the tree trunk and start with a base coat of dark brown. Dab orange paint on the surface of the tree. Dip a sponge into the green paint and dab it onto the surface of the land and tree trunks to create a mossy effect. The sponge will give the paint a bumpy texture and make the moss more realistic. Apply UV resin to the snake's belly and attach a transparent resin strip to support its body. I secured several small wooden sticks so the snake could float on the marsh water. The fish were used in a similar manner, simply place the snake under a tree trunk, expose it to UV light, and let it dry. Then apply white latex and put on a grass for decoration. Use a hot glue gun to apply to the outside edges of the molding and secure the acrylic panel. Apply UV resin at the interface position and use UV light to dry it. This helps secure the interface better and prevents resin leakage after pouring deep pour resin. Mix a small amount of fast cure resin and apply it to the surface at the bottom of the model. This prevents deep pour resin from penetrating into the clay and flowing out from the bottom. Fast cure resin is only suitable for small crafts and it will cause flash cure if the resin is deep. It looks like water is flowing and very healing. The next step is to pour the deep resin, which has a ratio of 2 to 1. This allows for the creation of large resin pieces. Let's Resin Automatic Mixer allows for a larger amount of resin to be mixed at once, ensuring an even mix. To enhance the transparency of the swamp, we also use transparent resin dye, ensuring the ideal height of the deep pour resin for a single modeling is 5 to 10 centimeters, and the amount of resin should not exceed 5 kilograms. The indoor temperature should be no less than 20 degrees, the properties of the resin are influenced by the temperature and the size of the piece. If the temperature is too high and the area is too large, 
it may cause the resin to bubble up, which is unavoidable. However, as long as attention is paid during use, it won't pose a problem. The automatic mixer button is set for 60 seconds and will stop automatically when the time is up. Typically, we stir resin for about 120 seconds. Drop in the green and yellow color concentrates, remembering to add them in small amounts, and light colors are acceptable. Place the mixing paddle in the cup, then run it for 60 seconds to remove excess resin from the mixing paddle. Pour the resin proportionally into the mixing cup ensuring finally, the ideal height spray of the it with alcohol pour resin and four. wipe it clean. Then pour the resin. Please pay attention to the pouring height and do not exceed the height of the surrounding edges, otherwise the resin may leak. After the resin has cured, remove the acrylic board from the surface. Stick the clay at the bottom. Color it directly with acrylic paint. Dab water effect cream on the surface. We need to apply it thinly and it will cure after 8 hours. The cream starts white but dries transparent. Wow, it really looks like a river. After the resin fully cured, we can dab green acrylic paint on the surface to make it more lively. Great success! We've completed this vibrant tropical rainforest scene. The materials needed are showcased at the end of the video. If you're interested in creating your landscape, click on the link to get the deep pour resin in the comments for an exclusive discount. I hope you can learn something from this tutorial. If you enjoyed the artwork, please consider sharing or liking it, your support means a lot to us. Thank you for watching, and we look forward to seeing you next time.